what's going on? Smoking a fourth generation, 1897, dark porter, big old thick walls, nice gold band. Uh, I got two fourth generation pipes, the other one's different, and it's a, a brown ale, so it's a little bit lighter, two-tone finish. I really like these uh, designs that Jeppesen uh, does on Europe. Out here on my front porch again tonight humid oh there's a little bit of a breeze that comes by every now and then that makes it a little more tolerable but mm. smoking some of the uh, hearth and home 10 to midnight from the recent yabo that I made a video about not too long ago and I gotta say, I'm impressed. At the very least, I'm definitely not disappointed. <clears throat> Hearth and Home 10 to Midnight is uh, more along the lines of what people consider a Balkan type blend. Virginia, Latakia. Orientals. I'm not sure if they put Black Cavendish in this or not. Uh, you know, this really isn't a review, just my opinions. Hang on now. Once again, it's been kind of quiet out here for a while and no sooner than the record button gets hit cars start coming down I'm gonna say that uh, this blend reminds me of GLP's quiet nights And dare I say it, nobody flip out now, Penzance. Of course, nothing is quite like Penzance because of the quality of the Virginias and however they happen to just make that blend that makes it so righteous. I was lucky enough to score uh, an eight ounce bag of Penzance a few years back at my local brick and mortar. Put my name on a waiting list in his shop. Walked in one day, he had a bag. Um, <clears throat> So I don't think this is quite as nuanced as Penzance or even GLP's Quiet Nights. But it has just that right amount of sweetness that's mixing well with the Latakia and the Orientals. The reason I say Penzance is because... Uh, Unlike GLP's Quiet Nights, I feel like this Hearth to Home, 10 to Midnight. What it's got that reminds me of the Penzance is kind of like a sublimated, toned down type of smooth taste. Probably not doing anybody justice trying to describe it like that, but that's why I really don't do reviews on blends because there are plenty other people out here on this channel that do a much better job of it than I ever could.
but at the very least I'll try and compare it to some other blends that <clears throat> most people will probably be familiar with. And I think at some point they must have changed uh, how they package this bulk form of this blend because every time I get the Pipes and Cigars magazine and I see a picture of this with all of the other bulk blends that they offer, it looks like a loose blend that they just kind of compress into like these little like pancake looking things. The Burley cake came like that, so it was true to the picture uh, as advertised, the Burley cake. But the 10 to Midnight actually came in like a flake, uh, and, a, and a pretty decent size flake too. I would say they were probably 3 inches long, a good inch wide, uh, and about the same thickness as... Uh, Flakes like Plum Pudding or uh, the GLP's Quiet Night. I'll try and edit in a couple of pictures, maybe a close-up of what it looks like. So there it is. I really don't care that they made more of a flake as opposed to, uh, well, my neighbor's sprinklers are acting up across the street. I was saying, uh, I really don't care that it's in a flake form as opposed to the compressed, loose, rubbed out version of what it looked like is advertised. But I'm actually really digging it. And I was sitting on the fence of buying this for a long time because I've got a decent amount of quiet nights and plum pudding and Maltese Falcon. Although Maltese Falcon's a little bit more closer to regular English than it is Oriental forward. Uh, Maltese Falcon is great. I love that stuff. But I wonder what it is that drives the blender or the blending houses to change the format, if you will, on how they distribute the product. Remember the first time I tried Cornell and Deal's uh, corn cob button, uh, corn cob pipe and a button nose? And it was cube cut, uh, which I really liked. Um, sometimes packing cube cut is a little bit easier than any form of flake or ready rubbed or standard ribbon depending on if you know what kind of pipe likes cube cut or smokes it well. <clears throat> and then last year I picked up another tin of the uh, corn cob pipe and a button nose and uh, to my dismay it was no longer cube cut it was just like a regular ribbon cut and the taste was exactly the same, but I want to say I felt like the nicotine level was a little bit stronger than it was the first time I had tried it. So uh, I did my usual. Added some black Cavendish to it to help tone down the vitamin N a little bit. And since it's no longer... Uh, 100% Cornell and Deal corn cob pipe and a button nose. I kind of just call it like hot cocoa. Winter time hot cocoa blend.
another one that comes to mind uh, to me is Fusilier's ration. I want to say a couple of years ago when I used to see it advertised and everyone saying how it was uh, an alternative to Bengal slices before they had relaunched Bengal slices again when Russ Wallet came out with the Fusilier's ration. I want to say it used to be just like uh, a ribbon cut in a tin. Now of course you get it, it's in a flake form. I guess to be more like the Bengal slices, they're both pretty good. Um, I've gone in the forums, I know some people like the Fusilier's ration a little bit better. Uh, I don't think one is that much greater than the other. They both both similar. I think I like the Bengal slices a little bit more. Pipes and Cigars had a deal on the Fusilier's ration. A little while back I picked up like four or five tins of it. I don't have too much left in one of the small mason jars that I pick from. Try and finish that up this this summer so that I can free up the jar for another blend. I don't like to keep buying more and more mason jars if I don't have to. I'll be inundated with the damn things. try and get through the blend if I really enjoy it. Wash it out good. Let it air out for a while before shoving the next victim into it. Hoping not to get dive bombed by those little red Japanese beetles that get attracted to the light in the summertime this time of the year because they bounce off the window and they bounce off the ceiling and they'll wind up going right down the back of my neck or something and I'll wind up jumping in the air and freaking out and screaming like a little two year old. And I don't mind most bugs. But I definitely hate the typical culprits, mosquitoes, spiders. Tried the burly cake. So far that. And this is the only two blends that I've tried from uh, that package I got that I did the Yabo on. Everything else I still got to get to. The uh, Captain Black Dark and Three Star Blue. John Bull. There you go. Get away from me. Oh, there he goes. Just landed on me. Little red bugger. The burly cake was pretty good. The smell was really nice. The, the bag smell, the tin smell, whatever you want to call it. To me, I'd say it sits somewhere right in between... Uh, half and half and velvet try and put a little screenshot or a picture of that up in here also
can see I'm probably going to wind up ordering more of this in bulk to throw it in the cellar for the future. I was almost hoping I wouldn't like it so I wouldn't have to do that. Wait. Dang things. This is definitely a really good blend. sprinklers going off across the street. Oh, there's that breeze. Supposedly going to have a chance of some thunderstorms maybe tomorrow night, the day after. We'll see been pretty hot and humid the past couple of days here on Long Island. Trekking in and out of the city for work. It's brutal. The ride home on the Long Island distressway. already got parts on my lawn going dormant. I get a lot of full sun where I live. I'll run my sprinklers in the morning. They'll go off before I leave for work. shocked how good this 10 to midnight is we like plum pudding and Balkan Sobrani and Balkan Supreme and Penzance and quiet nights some people say star of the east or at least star of the east flake what difference there would be just because one's flake and one's not, I don't know. I tried Star of the East. Not to flake the regular version. It wasn't bad. I think this is better. I don't think it's as good as Quiet Nights. The uh, Star of the East I'm talking about. wasn't enough for me to go out and buy more and keep it stocked in the cellar but I got I think like two pounds of plum pudding and quite a few tins of their special reserve flake and a couple tins of the special reserve the big blocks I got at least a pound or so of Maltese Falcon Probably a pound of quiet nights. So it's like how many pounds of Oriental forward Balkan type blends does one need to have? I kind of took a nod from uh, Beans. <clears throat> I remember him saying, you know, that he's he's buying and stocking up on the stuff that he likes now so that when he retires he doesn't have to spend any money on any of that stuff anymore since it's all just consumables that made a lot of sense to me so once I find a blend I know I really like I try and stock up on it when I can 
I always wait for at least the 20% off deals. Especially with the price of tobacco lately. Some of it's gotten ridiculous. I'm about halfway through this bowl already. There's a th pretty substantial thick bowl. Alright, probably about there to the bottom. Good inch and a half deep. Wouldn't mind getting a couple more near up pipes or uh, Jeppesen designed pipes. But again, how much of everything do you have to buy? I've got like 30 pipes in my collection already, and when I only smoke occasionally throughout the week, there's some pipes that I've got since. Um, first started getting into pipe smoking which was around 2016 and uh, they don't even have any kind of substantial cake built up on them yet because I try and go through all of them here and there give them all a fair shot breeze is starting to pick up a little bit. I think that's going to just about do it for me anyway. I'm already at 22 minutes in this video. I really don't like pushing long videos. So that's going to do it for me. I'm share my opinion on uh, Hearth and Home Midnight. 10 to midnight, their burly cake. Shot the breeze about a few other things. I always got ideas of what I would like to do for videos. It's just a matter of getting around to doing them. I would like to become a better presenter too. Anyway, hope you're all doing well out there. Until next time, be good.